Is this de the decision that we were expecting, Grant? Depends what week you were asking the question, I guess, um, Kirsty. If you'd been asking us a couple of weeks ago, maybe not. I think after winning in, at Alice Park and getting the backing of the senior players, I think Wednesday was, uh, was a foregone conclusion, quite frankly. It was glad that they just made the decision, right? They needed to come out and make a decision because for weeks there'd been conversations around who was going to coach the All Blacks. We've got a new word we can't use. We can't use review. That's now a debrief. Yes. Things continually changing in the world of sport. Look, you know, I think, and Nisbo talked about it, it was clear he needed a result, Ian Foster and his coaching team. But when you get the backing of your senior players who come out clearly after the game and the day after the game and they've supported their coach publicly, it made it very, very difficult, Issa, for them to go down a different path just 13 months out from a Rugby World Cup. I'm, uh, I'm stoked for Fozzie because his integrity and his character as an individual and as a coach, as a man, and, and the way he's held himself, he had every right to be smiling on Wednesday because in the end, when they sat back and looked at what he's trying to achieve and the adjustment and changes he has made, he gets retained. They make some adjustments to his coaching team going forward, Joe Smith. But I look at this and go, you know what? Good on him. I've, he stuck to his guns, right? I've, I've never been so excited midweek for a press conference. <laughs> <laughs> it was, We've had I was, plenty of press conferences to get excited about. And, and this, the, 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 finally there was just, you know, a board member, Mark Robinson, Fozzie, and a clear statement. And, you know, they, they were clear on what they wanted to do. But I just think it's great that where they've put a line in the sand. They've said he's here till the end of the World Cup. And from my perspective, then they can actually plan. It's none of these stepping on eggshells week to week, what's going on, what's not. So... If the messaging is clear, Mark Robinson was clear, he's there till the World Cup, then you can actually get on the bandwagon and actually start supporting it. If the win sealed the deal, or the win in, in South Africa, why did Mark Robinson not come out on the Sunday and back the coach? We were sitting here last week talking about it. Yeah, good question, good question. Um, he was probably a little uncertain at that stage, but I'm sure the senior players... I mean, how graphic was it last Sunday morning, Jeff? You and I were both there when Ian Foster did a press conference and turning up almost unannounced were senior players Sam Whitelock and Sam Kane and also Aaron Smith who didn't actually speak but uh, they were there in solidarity for the coach and I thought right there and then there's going to be no change of coach here. In my understanding too as well, there was another half a dozen players who wanted to be there. They were talking about the old-fashioned political background. You know, when you've got seven or eight people and you're going, what are they Nodding. all on about? Nodding. But reality is Ian Foster didn't want that grandstanding, but the senior players insisted they want to be re represented and gave the media the opportunity to challenge. And so when you look at it from that perspective, and Skulk Berger said it, if you've still got the dressing room, yeah. if you've got the backing of the players, the guys that you're expecting to go out and deliver, they've started something. But they now have to back it up. Yeah, they have to continue to get better from here. But I think you're going to see some changes, and we've already seen those changes, like I said, with Joe Smith. But overall, New Zealand rugby themselves admitted there were some mistakes. I just hope it never plays out like this again. Yeah, and we see a process, or there are the right people in the right positions in New Zealand rugby to be making the accurate assessments ongoing of the coaching staff so we don't back ourselves into a corner like we got where there was so much uncertainty. Yeah, I think, I think that they actually put their hand up, acknowledged that things might have been better handled differently. Um, but then they've sort of put a mark in the ground to go move forward. I think it does put a microscope on them to actually do their job and do it even better. And, you know, that's, they talked about high performance and said it a lot in that. It's high performance not just at a ground level, but it's at a board level. It's at, a, you know, the powers of B and the C-suites. Um, you know, they're about high performance too from the better of New Zealand rugby. Um, but at least everyone's moving forward. I'll say to you then, but we got a sense over there for the two weeks, and it was one of the great parts of being on tour once again with the All Blacks and inside their environment. When I say that, just staying in, in the same hotel and, and conference centre in Mombella that we were at. But is that what it was? Uh, well, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. But it was it said resort. I'm not <laughs> sure it was a resort. I can tell you that for a fact. D block. D block, we called it. But if you talk about it, if you talk about it, uh, we saw something from that group that there was some steel about them. There was a, a, an attitude about them. And I wasn't unsurprised that they got a result in Johannesburg, given the way that I'd seen some of their behaviours. Did you get that sense as well? Yeah, look, I did. And uh, maybe not so much for the first week. And, of course, they failed. 
uh, any losses of failure. Um, but certainly in Johannesburg, when they knew that they had to win. And give credit, too, to uh, the selector, the tour selectors, um, which I think Fozzie probably did it himself. He made some significant changes. Boy, that was brave to bring in those two new uh, front row props against the spring box and uh, Frizzell as well, you know, and, um, and it worked, absolutely worked. Well, Joe Schmidt has been brought in. He was a selector initially, and now he's uh, got a more hands-on coaching role. Issa, you've been coached uh, by him for a long time. What kind of coach is he? Is he a motivator? Is he a hands-on kind of guy? Well, I think Joe brings a different level of intensity. Um, there's, there's not too many coach There's a lot of great coaches in the world, and then... Um, there's sort of, you know, he's been labelled Mr Rugby. That's him for a reason. Um, as a player, um, you often think you've brought an idea to the table. Lo and behold, he's probably thought about it from six different angles and six steps ahead of you. Um, but then he also brings an unprecedented difference of level for coaches as well, and it makes the coaches bring their game up another notch, notch as well. So, look, he's... Um, uh, he knows just how to get the best out of players, but he just doesn't let off. And, you know, he's very, he's very easy to prank because he's so focused on rugby the majority of the time. But he just brings this level of intensity ongoing, whether it's analysis, whether it's training, whether it's the game, um, what you were eating. You know, and I think that works for certain groups. And I think for this group, it was just a masterstroke with Fozzie. Could I just, could I just ask you, uh, Issa... Um, Falling back into the assistant coach role, ha having been the head coach at, uh, at Leinster in Ireland for, what, six seasons, how will he feel about dipping back to his assistant coach? Oh, he, he, I, uh, one thing I know about Joe, and he'll, he'll have unquestionable loyalty. And I think that Fozzie brought him into the job, so he won't have any qualms about taking the assistant coach role because his skill is being on the field too. So he knows that he can you know, probably stay out of the press, um, not have to deal with the sort of top top decisions you know, that Fozzie will take care of and it'll let him go and do his job ten times better. Uh, two things I, I, I want to say is the fact that you talk to anyone inside the Blues, his ability on the field, his love for being out on the field coaching and when he was forced to get inside the environment early on in the season when all the teams had to Queenstown, he was loving it. And the feedback you know, I heard from inside the team was they were loving his, his input, his passion, his level of detail. He's got a clear uh, level of understanding of the game that, that is rare in this. But the one other word you mentioned was motivation. I'm sorry, but if you're an All Black, you don't need motivating. Because if you're in the All Black jersey, that should be motivation enough. The fact that you talk to any player who gets the opportunity to play in the jersey, it's not about getting selected as being the best you can be and being a great All Black and to giving it service. So he shouldn't need to go and motivate anybody. Mm. If you need motivation, you shouldn't be in that squad because mm. the responsibility is yours. And so that's where I think, once again, that shouldn't fall under his brief. It, it won't fall under his brief. His brief will be in the detail of helping this team on the field be a better rugby side, and I think that's where his great value will be. I think it's, I think it's quite a scary thought what he can do <laughs> um, because he has always been at teams, whether it was Clermont, Leinster, Ireland, that he's had to sort of deal, have a group of players, build them up, and then absolutely perform. Um, but... They, they still talk about him. They still talk about him in Clermont. They still talk about him weekly at Leinster and Ireland. They'll still talk about him in Ireland camp and what he did um, in his time there. But now he's coming to the elite of lead players. And this is the All Blacks that he gets to have his, get his hands on and get involved with. And that, I think, is a scary thought. And what sort of a luxury is it to have a bloke in the environment who's actually plotted the downfall of the All Blacks? <laughs> Twice. And done it. Yeah. And done it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. It's the sort of strength when you think about the, the conversations that they'll be having and will have had. I, I can't wait to see the input he's going to have and the effect going forward because we're hearing already, we've seen it in two weeks, and he hasn't been on the ground.